Metal Slug! Adepticon Roundup. The dead citizens of Tempest Eye say hi. Uh, what's that city? Never heard of it before. It doesn't see it seems to be stricken from all the records. Ahem. We got slides. The mods uh, worked overtime. Adepticon reveals recap by SJ Arcade. Arcade. Hope cast into ruin. Fourth edition time, baby. Let's go, new AOS. Looking cool. Might not. Oh, he's got the hourglass and a two handed axe that is looking kind of nice, to be honest. I'm liking this. Good axe. I'm asking you once again to reduce the volume of the music in the background. There we go. Hit that link in the next slide and come back. Easier than going through the slides for everything. Yeah, sure, I will do it. Um, Turm, the painter. First time chatter. Hello. What you painting? Not painting. Going over all the Adepticon reveals for Age of Sigmar. Um, and then going through a whole bunch of pictures. I took a picture of like a hundred armies at Adepticon. And so we're gonna essentially look at a whole bunch of painting, but after the news. Control click, ooh. It worked. Warhammer Age of Sigmar is reforged for an incredible new edition, English. Probably was already on English. We watched the cinematic trailer already. Enhance, enhance, enhance. Honestly, there's at least an argument for them being corrupted by any faction other than Chaos. Death and Destruction at least could, in a sense, but Chaos probably not, yeah. Mm. So that's what they've been up to. A billion-strong tsunami of fur and teeth and malice is boiling up through Akshi and beyond. As a scheme, centuries in the making comes to vile fruition, brings with it an all-new edition of Warhammer, Age of Sigmar. That's right, the most exciting fantasy tabletop war game in the world has been rewritten from the ground up. Oh shit. From the ground up? Word? Okay. Building on a decade of rich storytelling and bringing with it legions of new miniatures, new rules, and entirely new game mode, and a harrowing new chapter in the existential battle of the mortal realms. The story so far. Hope cast into ruin. Yeah, it looks kind of nice. He's got the one cape over the shoulder from... Oh, what chamber is that? Hold up. What what Stormcaster is the one that's immune to monsters rampages? Help. Uh, You know the one. You know the one. Anyway, um, somebody is going to type it in chat if I delay long enough. Astral Templars, that's it. It's got the comet trail a little bit on there. The Hammered Hammerers. True. That sounds like a Stormcast chamber to me. No, it's not Hollowed Knights, Mogwai Man. But the Hollowed Knights are sick. Um, Kale Shield thinks of the Prime. Thinks of the Big Prime. Having caught you live, I now remember to resub. Cheers. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Every $5 is $5 more that I get. And so I really appreciate it. Uh, memes aside, I guess. Um, after a long period seemingly at the periphery of the action, the Skaven have returned with a radiclysmic bang. The realms have gotten too used to a world where vermin can keep to the shadows, and the consequences are dire. All that skulking around was time spent plotting the greatest scheme of all. The Vermin Doom. Uh, 93 blossoming much of the fawatted sub-realm of Blight City directly into the realm of fire, and opening up festering rents in reality across the rest of the mortal realms. Oh shit, so their city is just now in Akshi. Uh, you know what? Realistic for Skaven, actually, I'm fine with it. Good. Kind of cool, actually. 
At the same time, the Great Horned Rat has struck a deal with Archeon himself and descended to his rightful place as the full, full-bodied fifth member of the Chaos Pantheon, somewhat to the chagrin of the erstwhile four. Um, hey, deal with it. Also to the chagrin of a lot of random players uh, with weird opinions. Did you play Meat Grinder when you were at Adepticon? I did not, Ironbrush Studio. I did not play Meat Grinder. I kinda heard about it, but I didn't participate. Big Rat, now bigger. Yeah, that's the, that's the headline. Mm, can someone enlighten me on the lore? Why in AOS should I be scared of Skaven? Like, besides a good jabillion of them, which Chaos and Orcs have been throwing uh, at the cities for Lumenia, only a technicality, Order Army has toppled one. Why should you be afraid of Skaven? Because they can teleport entire cities, they have nukes, they have warp technology, there are a billion of them, but you said that doesn't count. Um... They're just as dangerous slash more dangerous than other big dangerous armies. They just have better technology and they don't give a fuck if they kill their own men. Sometimes you start to think that they're doing it on purpose. Um, it's the technology probably. But it's also a bunch of other things. And um, they betray everyone and mess with everything. They were the ones that screwed up Nagash's big upside-down pyramid plan. Which actually ended up being kind of a good thing, question mark. It's uh, sort of complicated. Because of Scruff, things as a tier 1 appreciated for 18 months. At this point, how is Archeon not a god? Because he doesn't want to be. Is For the really, really, really simplified version. Because he doesn't want to be. At the end of the day, he probably has more power in his situation right now than if he were a demigod. Also, he hate the god. Um. Imagine being Solanesh coming out of your prison and it's like, hey, I'm back. What's changed? Oh, the great horned rat is now a proper god. What? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, he's a niche internet micro god. He could be, yeah. They're probably the most ruinous AOS faction next to BCR. Yeah, probably. I mean, just from what you do to people or what you do to your enemies, you know? Um, I've gone on this tangent before, but like, what Beast Claw do is they kill all your armies. And then they eat everyone. So all the people and livestock and animals and stuff are, are eaten. And then they eat all your crops and everything. And then the Stonehorn actually eat the buildings and roads and bridges and stuff. And then once they pass by, the Everwinter turns everything into a glacier. Where nothing is going to grow for the next hundred years. It's like complete and total erasure of, ever, of anything that used to be there. Kind of brutal. And Skaven do the same thing-ish, except with radioactivity. So, as far as ruinous stuff is concerned, I guess. Did I read this? Um, in the face of such calamity, the Stormcast Eternals of the Hollowed Knight's Chamber stand as the foremost bulwark against an ever-expanding tide of rodents. But the horrors they face in combating a continent-sized outbreak of Skaven are so overwhelming they have been forced to call upon the Ruination Chamber. Oh, shit. These are the most grizzled veterans of the Stormcast, heroes of a thousand battles dating back to the Soul Wars and before. Brave men and women who have died over and over again in the service of the God King. The innumerable reforgings have taken a heavy toll. These heroes have been sequestered in monasteries for years now, clinging to the last vestiges of their humanity. 
Now they have been called upon once more, the only forces hardy enough to enter a war zone blighted by the corrupting force of the Warp Stone. For these mighty warriors, this may be the final time they step into battle, at least as themselves. Which is actually kind of a cool concept when you're on last call of a juicer or something for bringing in like palladium rifts kind of stuff into it. Okay, you're about to fully lose all that is of you. So we're going to put you in monasteries. We're going to take you out of a combat role. And we can, you can do important stuff and give your knowledge to people and just stuff like that. But, um, as we saw in the trailer, it seems, at the end, she was stabbed with the fucking, uh, crew boy's poison thing. And she just looked mad. I don't. It was almost like she didn't even die. She was just upset. She was pissed. And so you could potentially infer that um, as they lose touch with their humanity and themselves and they lose bits of their soul and it's replaced with stuff, um, there's less feeling there. You have more hit points, but they, you know, it's one of those. Like, you're just more durable and hardy because you're hardly even a person. You're more of a... Mm, like a golem, kind of. So maybe Ruination Chamber uh, are big, is what I'm saying. The game. Everyone over 30 just lost. <laughs> Got him. The huge shift in narrative is accompanied by changes to the game. The rules for Warhammer Age of Sigmar have gradually introduced new layers of complexity over the past nine years, always building on a robust framework, but perhaps not able to take stock and reassess the experience as a whole. So, for this edition, the team wanted to make sure they got everything right. Back to the drawing board, not afraid to make big sweeping changes. Interesting. Very interesting. And then we have a new AOS. Got some pony boys. Got the stuff that used to be good and now is shelved. All sorts of stair fighting zinch over here. A real Bam Marger. <laughs> Oof. Poor guy. Interesting. Let's see Paul Allen's game. Oh, did somebody say something interesting in chat? Let me scroll up. Oh, my scroll feature is broken. Oh, no. It's gone forever. Well, if it was really good, they'll just, they'll just do it again. Right? Yeah, it's not a new screenshot, I know. It's a shame. Um, the core rules have been reforged. Oh, they're getting, they're having fun with it. You know, we're using the language. The core rules have been reforged for the first time since the first edition of the game, released way back, 2015. And some people on Twitter are still mad. The focus has been on streamlining, streamlining accessibility, modulation, mo modularity. But not at the expense of depth. To ensure that the epic fantasy battles of your imagination can be recreated on the tabletop. This new edition is absolutely still the Warhammer Age of Sigmar that you all know and love, with all the friction taken out. Cleanly and smartly, filleted like a salmon, it has the tactical and strategic nuance of the previous editions, driven by a real desire for the background to show through on the tabletop. All right, this entire paragraph, that's a lot of words to say nothing at all. But, you know, they got to do it. It's a press release. More like Age of Shit, Mari. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, it's still funny. Nine years later, it's still hilarious. Um, on top of all that, there are modular rules, plenty more opportunities for reactivity in your opponent's turn via an updated system of command points and abilities. 
and its own tweaks and refinements, not least to the double turn, which has been fine-tuned into a knife-edge decision. With a clever twist to scoring, put simply, it is the best edition of Warhammer Age of Sigmar yet. I mean, it would be really weird if they didn't believe that, right? You work in marketing and feel the pain of having to produce content without being told anything. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, They have to be like, in general, just say good things about what rules could... In the ways in which rules could generically be good, just type about that, you know? What does this mean for my army? Yeah, what, what does this mean? What did they mean by this? Mm. Rebuilding the core rules means that quite a lot has changed, and every faction in the new edition has had its entire set of War Scrolls and Army rules updated and reworked. Um, that might not be like a great thing, but we're pretending, okay? It's hopium. Big hopium. Mm. The fact that they even decided to revisit all the war scrolls and army rules, it's, that's good. We kind of wanted them to do that. That's good. Uh, Catfish666, thanks for the primer. You're stoked to see the new Vanguard mode? Ooh, I don't know about that, but we'll get to it. Slouching Beast is a good name, by the way. Big, big. Now we got picture. As a result, each faction in the new edition will receive a free downloadable faction pack at launch. Each pack will contain all of the rules needed to play. Battle traits, sub-factions, enhancements, spell lores, and war scrolls for every unit. This also means that the battle tomes from the current edition will not be compatible with the new rules. And that every faction will receive a new battle tome over the next three years. But, that's not potentially a bad thing. In fact, potentially, it's a pretty good thing. Using the old edition's rules for three fucking years, finally getting a new battle tome, and then they instantly announce the next edition, that shit sucks. It sucks every time. Um, I welcome Index. Twitch Prime. Basically, for this reason. Um, now, they could do a bad job on the indexes, and then, you know, fuck them. But, I'm just saying the idea of index is a great idea, and it's good. Playing with last edition's rules for years, and you finally get a battle tome, and it's just like a brand, now it's a new edition. That sucks. That sucks so much that I think indexes are a great idea. Now, again, they could make indexes really low effort and bad. And then that sucks, but the concept of indexes is great. Is my uh, thoughts on it. Mosasasaur. Thanks for the big primer. Fourth edition hype. New Stormcast. Here we come. Nice. Book burning time. Quick run to half price book. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah, yeah. It's the most edition edition of AOS ever. Ready for Gobsprack to still have an abysmal save despite being a faction face. Well, I guess we'll just see, won't we? We'll have more details on what the new Morse Girls look like and what you can expect from every faction in the coming months. Spearhead. A new way to play. As well as updates to match play and Path to Glory. We're keeping Path to Ignore. And we're keeping matched play, which is the way that everybody plays. The new addition to Warhammer Age is Sigmar. Ooh, accidental capitalization. Someone cancel them. Uh, is accompanied by Spearhead, a fresh game mode that plays in an hour or less using the contact uh, contents of each faction's Spearhead and Vanguard boxes. Okay, and then they show all of them.
this sentence I've highlighted here was in the original board meeting for them coming up with this game mode in the first place. Some, some guy in a suit stood up in front of everybody and is like, we need a way to play Age of Sigmar in an hour or less. We just do. And that man was right. I don't know if I'm going to care about Spearhead or not. We'll see. But, um, I think the idea is correct. Yeah, you do need a version, a way to play this game in under an hour. I agree. They've tried to do that a few times in the earlier GHBs. Um, GHB 18 and 19. Back when General's Handbook used to have content in them instead of just seasonal rules. Um, yeah, meeting engagements, I'm reminded of that, Tomb King Tristan. Meeting engagements fucking sucked. But what they were trying to do was a good idea, if, if that makes sense. Damn, that game mode was shit. But, um, anyway, the thousand point game that isn't unbalanced and is fun and you can play in an hour, that's essentially what they're trying to do. And that's a good thing to try to do. Because that's your on-ramp. What's the problem with AOS? It sucks under 2k, uh, basically doesn't scale down well. I mean, chess doesn't scale down well either, and it's not a problem for that game, but uh, unlike chess, you have a lot of people trying to play Age of Sigmar with half the pieces because they're kind of expensive and they take a while. So it is a problem you should try to solve, and this is their newest way to try to solve it. Good. Good, right? Uh, guess based off what Phil said about reinforcements in the preview video. Phil? Ooh, we're going to watch that one too, I think. So do you think Spearhead will kill 1k as a learning mode? I hope so. I think Path to Glory is also kind of supposed to be a learning mode. Or like a slow grow league kind of buy thing, you know. So you're, you're supposed to do, you got Path to Glory and 1k. Spearhead is almost certainly trying to replace that. And it's good. You hope it's bad because this would mean you buying like six boxes because a thousand points is something. You could do that. Mm. They did something similar in 40k and then let it die. Was it good though? Or did they? was it great but they didn't support it? Or I guess there could be a lot of reasons for that, right? Oh, Combat Patrol is what they did for 40k. That's what it's called. You prefer to see Grim, Dark, individually unique Stormcast over time. More hate for chaos, more brutality. They didn't support Combat Patrol, but the game mode is fun. Oh, okay. All right. Are you supposed to support Combat Patrol if it's just an on-ramp to the game? If it's good and fun... Maybe that's fine, right? It's good and fun. It doesn't need anything else. It's supposed to be the thing you play twice. You know. On your way to getting 2k. But, I don't know. It's a different type of mindset that I don't have. Uh, so mostly I'm... Kind of looking for other people's thoughts on it. Because when I started the game, I'm like, what's this game? And they're like, this game is Age of Sigmar. It's a 2000 point war game. All right. So I so I played it and I'm like, I'm going to get 2000 points and play it and then I did. But apparently that's weird. Nobody does that. Everybody's like, I'm going to buy 400 points and then play it a bunch. And then 500 points and then play it a bunch. And then 600 and just all that. I wasn't trying to do that. I just want to play the game. Oh, Combat Patrol didn't get rebalanced from the initial release, from what you understand. Okay, I see. I see. Um, Spearhead, well, hold on. Um, this might surprise you, but Spearhead is a fun and exquisitely balanced version of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. So there, there you have it. <laughs> Your be at ease. Be at ease. Um, because it is fun and exquisitely balanced. 
So there it is. I mean, it's cut and dry, black and white. Tomb King Tristan, BTFO, completely owned. Eat shit, bitch. Obviously, it's fun and exquisitely balanced. So I don't know why. I just don't understand all the negativity here. Anyway, um, add a brilliant way to introduce the game to beginners. But it's not just new players who will want to play this mode. Oh, word? Okay. It really takes advantage of the new modular core rules to introduce a unique tactical spin. The Design Studio DS. Absolutely love it. We like our product. And it's become one of the most popular games to play in lunch hours and after work around the office. Yeah, probably because it takes an hour. You know? Probably takes an hour. Uh, despite its small scale, Spearhead is a deep, robust game system. Mm. Uh, with enough depth and twists to, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to provide endless replayability. Uh, we'll definitely have more to say on this system in the near future. All right. Hey, I can't wait. Also, Spearhead, well, never mind. Never mind. Chill. Mm. <laughs> we like this system. Uh, but remember, the takeaways are that it is fun and exquisitely balanced. Deep, robust, depth, near, speed, Anyway, um, Fizz 6, redeem switch hats. Sure. I can do that. I'll go Altered Beast. How about? Combat Patrol's problem was that the weapon options were too restrictive. Okay. Your wife is also one of the most popular games to play during lunch hours and after work around the office. Very good, sir. It's one of those yokes. Um, anyway, what's next? Summer will be an exciting time to be a Warhammer Age of Sigmar fan, and there's ample opportunity for new players to discover this incredible universe and game. Ample. Uh, tune in over the coming... Uh, uh, to learn more about the changes coming to Warhammer Age of Sigmar and see all the new miniatures. Lots of new miniatures. Imagine the restraint needed for them not to type loads of new miniatures like they always do. Basically 1984 in here. No censorship. Um, and choose your allegiance by signing up for the Stormcast or Skaven Warhammer community newsletters at the links below. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I can't, I don't see ogres, any, any beast claw, any monster trucks, any stone horns. Also, I ain't signing up to more fucking emails. Uh... If it about rat ogres, hey, well, rat ogres are disgusting. They look stupid. They're a stupid idea. Um, it's, uh, oh, what's that stupid, oh, shit. What's that stupid thing that Twitter complains about? And usually it's, um, it doesn't even matter. Uh, oh, God. White people getting themselves upset on somebody else's behalf uh, when those people didn't ask for it. Uh, hold on. It, it's when you like some other culture, and so you, like, um, celebrate that. You're like, oh, cool, I like that. That shit's sweet. I'm happy. I'm enjoying something. And then the white people from California are like, fuck you. Uh, cultural appropriate, that's it. Um, rad ogres are cultural appropriation of ogres. I don't appreciate that. Cancel them. Cancel them and take their jobs so their children starve. Um, anyway, um, and if you don't agree with me, you're part of the problem and also a Nazi. Um, anyway, <laughs> Crip Shadow feels attacked. Don't worry about it. The Washington Rat Ogres team. Um, what's next? Well, that's apparently everything we need to know for fourth edition talk, but, um, there's more, which we will be getting to. Big lady. Ugh. All right. Abraxa.
Spear of the Ever Chosen. Um, I would... Anyway, uh, let's see. Dude, the monster looks sick. Great mount. I have, um... I've been critical in the past about mounts in Age of Sigmar being two different creatures duct taped together in a stupid way that looks stupid. When a horse would have actually been cooler. And I understand that Age of Sigmar is trying to be wacky and silly and over the top. And so just horses isn't going to do it except in the just horses faction, which is City of Sigmar. That's fine. Just horses containment zone, right? I have complained in the past about bird duct taped to dog, ostrich duct taped to lion, uh, ram duct taped to sphinx without the just stupid. Okay. Uh, this is cool. It's some shit duct taped together, but it's cool. That's all I ask is that it'd be sick, right? Just sweet. Uh, yeah, Archeon's horse. Oof. Uh, collector oof, even. Anyway, this shit's hot. Uh, great antlers. Sorry. Horns here. Um, lady on top. Great face. Great face. Black queen. Horns and shit. Evil looking. Uh, Darth Maul. Genderbender, Darth Maul, lady. Um, cool rune shield. Nice pose with the spear. A classic pose. Uh, cape game. 9 out of 10. Very good. Push my glasses up. Very cool. I clapped. Um, what else we got here? Dude, nice, nice mug. Nice mug. That's a mug you don't want to chug. I don't know if I like the goop. I don't know if I'm in love with the goop exactly. Yo, a good female face? Sculpt in Games Workshop? I didn't think I would live to see this. Nice tongue, nice lower jaw. Just the face is looking a little Wayne Reynolds, you know? It's probably not a direct inspiration, but it's looking a bit like it. Damn, this shit is sick. And her cloak is made out of her old mount, who was purple. And her old mount probably failed her or something, and so she wears his flesh. It's me, by the way. Um, damn, this shit is sick. 9 out of 10. Awesome. Big fan. Big fan. Great work. I don't know anything about her lore, Drake Claw. Not yet. <laughs> that should have been me, not him. It's not fair. Is 9 out of 10 better than a 5 out of 7? It's about the same. Um, due to the add op property and some simplification, maybe some stoichiometry, it's about the same. Pretty, pretty much the same. Next. Terrain piece. Oh, this is sick. I didn't know that Slaves to Darkness needed a terrain feature exactly. But if they're going to get one, it might as well be fucking cool, which this is. Known as the Nexus Chaotica. I've, uh, I've seen that movie. Um, these shrines draw in magical energy to feed the demons bound within, allowing them to fuel dark sorcery or project pulses of mutative power. That's sick. This thing is cool. Big fan of this one. Get the impression that the, I get the impression that this back here is like turning and grinding through the ground. And bursting in the flame when it gives a uh, when it gets in contact with the air. I don't know if that's really happening, but it, in my head, that's what's happening. Plus, when the casting is within three, deals d three damage to enemies within one on a six up. 
Is that really what it does? That'd be disappointing. It's the one army in the world that never needs a cast bonus. And imagine an opponent getting within one of your terrain feature ever. But we'll see. You made that for shock value? That's what I figured. It was monologue is 11 out of 10 right now. Chill. I'm reading words from the from the screen. I'm reading it. And streaming is very challenging. <laughs> you got to think on the spot. Um, Reddit broke down all the runes on that. All existing gods plus two unknown ones. Oh. You mean they went to like rough rune dictionary kind of thing and it just like it just says corn slanesh somebody somebody or do you mean the symbols on it runewiki.com imagine like industrial mining drill but instead for oil they mine for magic that's cool that sounds like a skaven thing or a KO thing. Possibly a Fire Slayers thing. If they get a little more industrious as a nation. Which I hope they do. But yeah, Skaven do mine act actually. Um, Cedar Bill says, I think it's 5pp. Sorry, I was making dinner and missed the chance to call you an ESL bigot. Here's $5. I click like. <laughs> um... Zoom in on the center fire under the gem. Are those the drama and comedy masks? Oh, okay. I see. Under the what? Under the gem. No. Uh, as I see it, it's just skulls. But maybe they hid an Easter egg in there. That could be neat. Oh, you mean these two on the fire itself? Mm, maybe. One doesn't have a mouth and one has a mouth open. It's not exactly a smiling one and a frowning one. I don't know. And there's warp stone in them there hills. Sock and Boskin confirmed. Yeah, Hashud for sure. Yeah. Mm, SG Arcade says, um, I took over for a second. My apologies coming up. Hey, well, oh, no problem. No problem. All right. The SG Arcade, one of my mods, made this whole thing. So, what the, what the hell, what the hell is this? SG Arcade, mad in the <laughs> angry SG Arcade angrily observing his orb his words not mine warhammer the old world dwarven mountain holds battalion look at his broke ass no cannon happen no hero happen big standardless ass box if this shit is more than 150 dollars i spit four core choices and two special no heroes have i got news for you we don't know the prices yet. Special thanks to SG Arcade's commentary here for Old World. I don't know anything about Old World, but there it is. Ahem. Oh, uh, hey, whoa, sorry, I missed it. Did you like the Big Chaos Lady? Dude, it's so sick. I have no complaints. The whole thing is amazing. It's so good. Look at this. Black beauty. And a good GW female face. Um... They're learning. They're getting better. They're an improvement machine. Everything about it is sick. Uh, awesome. That was the mm, elevator pitch, I guess. I will show. I will show the auto mod captured something. I had to click on it. Yeah, a weapon that kind of makes sense on a giant mount, which is a spear like weapon. You know, pretty fantasied up, right? But next, see, uh, let's see Paul Allen's army box. Warhammer Dwarf Army. 
Dwarf Organ Gun, Warriors, Stone Thrower, Warriors, Crossbows, Dwarf Miniatures, Hero, Hero, Hero. The Dwarf Arm This must be an ancient box set. This must be an ancient box set, I'm guessing. Is that unit diversity? Is that ready to play out of the box? Oh my god. Is that a box exclusive hero to incentivize my purchase? Four core choices, three special, two rare. Three heroes. Jesus. That is really super. Anyways, they did make some neat heroes sold separately, and then we picture them here. Yeah, these just look like cla these look like the dwarves that'd be riding a monster truck in um that one Blizzard game from 1995. Uh what is it called? Rock and Roll Racing, I think. They're just old classic looking dwarves. They're just dwarves, man. I think this one is my favorite here cuz his helmet is very aesthetic. It's very nice. The helmet really fits with everything. I like the flying eagles. Them carrying the dude on top of theirs, silly in the way that they're supposed to be silly, right? Wide gamers, H bod. They're very triangular, as is their type. All right, old stuff. The beef. <laughs> the guns are out. He's wielding an axe, but he's got two guns. Am I right? Anyway, this ends the Warhammer Old World content that SJ Arcade, in his purview, is allowed to post here. No big deal. Warhammer Underhooled? Yeah. So, over here, I like this guy. I don't like Trenchcoat Man. I think the meme is stupid, but it's well done. If that's what it is, right? They all have these... Are, is this like bumper cars, uh, electricity? Where they only fight with a low ceiling to power up their electro zappers and stuff? Kind of wacky. Kind of wacky. It's kind of... It's still a little miss by me. Conceptually, it's cool. They're trying to catch lightning. That's funny. The whole thing's funny. Yeah. Electro Franken killers. They look like escaped mental patients. I think that was definitely the goal. <laughs> that was the target uh, goal for sure. Yeah, they're lightning rods. The religion is based on getting struck by Sigmar's lightning and standing near Stormcast. Yeah. Um, and then over here we have just stupid crap. Bats with weird big pubes for some reason. Boring. Just the the thing of Flesh Eater Quartz that I find the most boring is just shit like this. I'm in a coma. Resident sleeper. Literal regular ghouls. Um... Holy shit, I don't care. Uh, one out of ten. These guys, really, really cool, silly, stupid lore. Models that look like what they're supposed to look like. Fucking weird. Fucking weird out of ten, I like it. I like when you get that weird. Even if it's too weird for most people, even if I don't necessarily like it or want it, I'm glad you're getting this weird, because I like weird shit. Um, anyway, five out of seven. Oh, with Soren, good evening to Texas. Better than man bat hanging dong? Disagree. But then again, I suppose it has to be for kids or something, right? So, you love the two guys in a trench coat cosplaying as a storm cast? Yeah, because that's that's what they're doing, right? You can see the, they have the mask, they have the fake lightning bolts. They're kind of trying to, they're actually cosplaying. Like, that's the whole thing. And Stormcast are seven foot nine or whatever the fuck. And so it's two guys in a trench coat. Anyway. <laughs> I like weird shit. Hey, well, 2024. I mean, that's me. I won't shrink away from it. 
You do think the sculpts on the ghouls are good, but they're not an interesting warband. Yeah, I'm not judging the sculpt. I'm judging the art. I'm judging the the presentation, the style, the concept art. The I'm not judging the like the craft of sculpting realistic looking muscles and distended this and that and ooh, this looks like wings with hands. The sculptors did a great job as they always do. It's just a boring idea. They got a blueprint and it said, make something boring. And then they had to do that. Right. So anyway, mm. Oh, shade Roo TV. Hope you had fun, bro. Yo, I did. It was a sick, it was a good, um, Adepticon man. I went out to eat with, I think your mod or one of your mods. I don't know. Uh, no need for gravity. Shit was hype. Man Bad has one really long toe. I think it's supposed to be kind of a reference to raptors, even though that would be on more of the ankle type area. I'm not sure about that, but yeah. Yeah, Gravity, you said your commander decks were wild. Yeah, I like um, I like drawing cards. I like playing Legacy in Commander, basically. And um, look, if it becomes 3v1, fine. Click for Bone Dog? Well, if you insist. Adepticon Preview, Twisted Followers of Lariel and Nagash Battle in the Briar. And the Bone. Oh, I just noticed my uh, music in the background has stopped, so I'm going to start playing some other stuff. Yo, that's way too loud, right? Yeah, maybe that. Maybe how about that? Mm. After many long... Mo Hold up. Enhance. Enhance. Unenhance. Okay, there we go. After many long months punctuated by bouts of bloody conflict, the warbands cutting their way through the ravening ruin have their eyes on the final prize. The wrecked Seraphon Temple ships to Laxus is near. But the heart of the Gnarlwood is a tangled mess of ravenous beasts and lethal plant life giving rise to great swamps overflowing with corpses. Halaxis will not give up. It's treasures easily. What the fuck is this music? Hold up. Yo, you gotta chill. Music. Um, am I watching this? Eight minutes? Hold up. Eight minutes? No. Now we're clicking through. <laughs> I don't care about the war cry rules. Eight minute video. Imagine. Does the designer start talking about it after this? Yeah, I sorry. I like Age of Sigmar, Warcry. Eh. I'm not playing that. <laughs> Apologies. You like the Lightning Cultist? I kind of do too. Few gods in the mortal realms are as inextricably linked and vehemently opposed. As Nagash and Alariel, yeah, well, the god of life and the god of death, right? In Warcry, Briar and Bone, the endless war between death and life continues to rage between the teratic cohorts of the Ozark Bone Reapers and the twist wield of the Sylvanath. Look at this. This is cool. Look at that in the background there. Isn't that cool? The walking uh, tree stump thing. That shit's kind of sick. That's cool. I like that one. I wonder if they'll show it closer. Though Nagash resents the uncontrolled fecundity of the Narwood, potent technology in these ruins has given even the great necromancer pause. Fecundity? Nagash doesn't like when a creature dies, draw a card for three? All right. I suppose he doesn't like how it could help your opponents too, which is fair. Um... Anyway, to prevent this power from falling into the hands of his enemies, 
and investigate it for his own nefarious ends. He has dispatched the te uh, Terratic cohorts to secure relics, slay rivals, and collect a tidy tithe of bone in the process. He prefers Suicide Black? Oh, okay. No problem, then. These are some of Nagash's most pitiable creations. Twisted bone constructs wrought out of spite and flung out to range in the wilds. Each cohort is led by a Cavalos Centauri. The humiliating fusion of a liege Cavalos and their former steed. And heralded by Mortec... Cycloptians, whose humanoid silhouette conceals a warped bestial mind. Teratic prowlers are debased hunting beasts crafted from failed Mortec soldiers. God damn, tell me how you really feel about them, Nagash. While winged aviarch harpies are sculpted for lethality and self loathing. <laughs> damn. Crystallized Twitter given flight. Such is the fate of those who fall, uh, fail the god of undeath. Sculpted for self loathing. This is so stupid. Keep in mind, I hate centaurs. They're dumb. Um, this is extra dumb. Derp ass single eye. Uh, look stupid. Weird weapon. Thing, I don't, dumb. Uh, zero out of ten. A failed experiment. Sculpted for self loathing, though, true. Next. Um, just dogs. They look fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they look like they could be a different type of alien from the movie Aliens if they wanted to put dogs in them. The idea of OBR making dogs when they could make soldiers, though, is stupid, and I don't like it. I don't like it. OBR shouldn't have chaff like this. They should be elite, perfect soldiers uh, gestalted from six military geniuses and shit like that. You don't get chaff. That's your weakness. Your weakness is you don't get chaff, because all your guys are amazing. Um... This is hella stupid. Looks like the end boss from Doom 3. That's a bad thing. Fucking dumb. Zero out of ten. And then some weird leg guys that aren't cool. This is the worst. Is this Underworlds? What the fuck game is this? Is this Warcry or Underworlds? I don't know the difference. This shit's stupid. This is the worst release. Warcry? This is the worst Warcry release ever. The added... lore and expanded, like, ideas for OBR here are all terrible. They're bad. They make the army less cool, even technically existing. This shit sucks. Ah. Uh, eat shit. Anyway. Um, Lime Green Crayon. Crayon Eater. Thanks to the Tier 1 for 35 months. Get your Xandri Dust ready. Okay. Get your Garbage Can ready. It's where they belong. Um, the Woeful Forces of Death must contend with equally tormented Sylvan. Actually, you know what? All this, this whole paragraph makes a lot more sense now. I read this whole thing, and I'm like, damn... It's like Nagash made them on purpose stupid as a punishment. And then I looked at them and I'm like, yeah, kind of checks out. Yeah, but you shouldn't have done it. Don't do that. Um, in the game anyway. If your goal was to make something stupid on purpose that people have to play with, maybe don't. It's cool lore, but don't put that on us. <laughs> um, anyway, with minds clouded by saffrophyte spores and bodies overgrown by constant agony, 
Many twist wield are driven only by an obsessive hope to reach the Everspring Swath and receive Alario's healing touch. Those with their sanity intact fear that this could spell disaster for the Sylvanath. Instead, they become wandering pariahs moving from grove to grove to avoid spreading their infection or delving into the Gnarl Wood to seek a cure. These bands are led by swarm sages whose spite swarm colonies hungrily prune the parasite growths of their followers. Oh, like the little fish on those one sharks, you know. Twist Rewardens are stalwart sentinels who suppress their pain to command Twistwood Revenants and Twistwood Dryads in battle while maddened. Twistwood Spite Revenants descend upon unfortunate enemies with lashing briars. You read that as Swarm Sausages? Yo, I hope so. I don't like it. No, sir, I don't like it. First of all, the comb over half shaved butch cut thing, you've done it too much. There are other hairstyles uh, for roller derby chicks. Um, even if it is vines, you, you've done it too much now. Um, nah. I mean, no, it's not as bad. I, you know what, That the hair actually I was, I was tunnel visioning the hair a little bit. This is fine. The hair ruined it for me, but if you just ignore that, everything else is kind of neat. A bunch of little tiny bees, they're swarming. Sure, you know. You're a big fan of her uh, personality. Fair enough. Um. I never did much care for the half, the half and half things. Is this still too loud? I, to me, it is still just a touch too loud. Here, we're switching, we're switching music. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, the bark parts are a little strange. I don't like how I can see through them. Beard parts are neat, weapons are neat and stuff. It's okay. I guess, it, I mean, that's what they look like normally. At least their faces are neat. Very expressive, right? Yeah, this is Vine. This is Vine. Poor guy, half of his face is AIDS. And he's got a potion. <laughs> he's, he's got a potion. This is stupid, don't like this one, not a fan. Dumb face, dumb arm turning into dumb vines, dumb out of dumb, don't like it. Um, these are just uh, dryads. Higher polygons, you know, upgraded from that N64 stuff. Man, this, this whole box set, Twisted Followers of Alarion, yeah, and, Briar and Bone is just like the world's rejects, uh, just disposable, uh, mutant, wiggly, uh, dumb on our, our, our creator made us stupid on purpose. And now you got to deal with it. Um, just sad. <laughs> this is the saddest box. And then this shit is kind of sick. I like how it almost looks like it could be it could be walking, you know. Uh, I didn't know it had a giant sandworm on it. It's kind of neat. I could use it as a Ogre Maw Tribes display board, maybe. Dune popcorn bucket looking ass, but it's very interesting terrain. This is this is the star of the show. This is the best thing in the box. Them. They can't even make them look cool in the art because they're just so dumb conceptually. They tried. Um, once you chewed that over, you can fucking spit it out because it ain't good. And feast your eyes on something even more Warhammer. Yeah, sure. 
Hey, whatever you say. Get it off. <laughs> Shall I who? Yeah. What is it? Nissan? What is it they say? It's not Nissan. <laughs> Nissan U. Uh, Lisan Al Gahib. Is that it? Muadib. Yeah. It's the popcorn one. Liam Neeson Al Gahib. And then there's some cool chaos from 40k. Um, yeah, I suppose they're all right. There's something off about their, about their, uh, proportions. Don't you think? They got a little bit of a chibi look to them. Maybe that's not correct. But, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. I don't particularly like it. Maybe it's the big fist that's throwing me off. Man, I gotta say, when you compare Slaves to Darkness to Chaos Space Marines, Slaves to Darkness fans be eating good and Chaos 40k fans, my condolences. My condolences. This is what you gotta pretend to be excited about. All right. Yeesh, that's a rough one, kid. You've had 40,000 years to look cooler than slaves and you still can't. Although Darth Vader head is kind of a nice reference, I guess, because it's exactly Darth Vader's face from the third movie. All right. <laughs> Meggy Dolan says, yeah, there you go. Hmm. All right. That's all the Adepticon reveals, but there's, there's so much more. Um, there's a lot of like, dude, trust me and articles and, oh, this is, I heard this is going to be a rule change. I heard that's going to be a rule change and pictures of a million armies and Adepticon stories. Hey, whoa, story time. Also the golden demon stuff. Yeah.